morning, people of God. Welcome to our online service, and thank you for joining us this morning. We celebrate today as the 18th Sunday after Pentecost and World Communion Sunday. Let us put our hearts, minds, and then spirits together and worship the Lord. Let us begin with our opening hymn, Come, Christians, Join to Sing, hymnal number 158. God is everywhere and he watches over us and knows every move we make. Therefore, keep us from practicing the forms of religion instead of seeking the power of Christ. Let us come to the Lord with our humble hearts. Now we pray together in unison. Amazing God, you have called us from different walks of life. All of us have unique talents, gifts, and skills, but also have diverse backgrounds, locations, and goals. In spite of our differences, O oh Lord, you have pulled us together to make a beautiful tapestry of your family of faith and discipleship. We are grateful that the Holy Spirit always encourages us to accept and love each other and learn from one another to create the harmony and peace. Jesus stimulates us and challenges us to reach to the higher goals in our lives and in God's kingdom. As we celebrate World Communion Sunday today, help us to remind ourselves that all humankind belongs to God's family, and we are called to love even our enemies. Therefore, like Apostle Paul's confession, we forget what is behind, but strain toward what is ahead, and finally we all win the prize of heaven together. Today, in your presence everywhere, O Lord, May we worship you without exclusion and rejoice together always in your loving grace. Amen. Let us have a brief moment for meditation and prayer. Hear the words of assurance. As we gather together to lift up our common quest for peace for all the people of the world, God's compassion will heal our wounded world. 
the Holy Spirit works in and through us to make this world full of beauty, justice, and freedom. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today's anthem, Lead Kindly Light, will be dedicated by Deborah and Rex Endelin. Thank you, Deborah and Rex, for your beautiful music, which always touches our heart. Thank you. Today's children's message will be delivered by Sue Predis. Sue? Good morning, children. I have exciting news about our Sunday programs this morning. We will begin our cyber classes for elementary students at 11 a.m on Zoom, and our secondary classes on Skype at 1 p.m. from Germany today. Your families have been contacted and the links provided. I am hoping that the classes will be very well attended. If you would like to participate and have not received the login, please contact the church office this week and we'll make sure you get in for next week. Today's lessons are based on the Bible readings from Psalm 19 and Philippians 3, 4 through 14. You can find the book of Psalms in the Bible by opening it right in the middle. The book of Psalms is written like poetry and many people like to memorize and recite parts of the verses and whole Psalms. I will quote the last verse of Psalm 19 today in our prayer. As you grow up, there are many times that you need to learn something new. It might be tying your shoe. It might be riding a bicycle or playing a musical instrument or even knitting a scarf. Can you do one of those things? Were you able to do it the very first time you tried? Well, I'll bet the answer to that most likely is no. You may have gotten frustrated and even angry at yourself because the task seems so difficult. Well, 
Even then, did you give up? I'll bet if you wanted to reach your goal, you tried over and over again until you could do it. Then you were very proud and happy that you did reach your goal. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the early followers of Jesus. He talks about learning to be a good Christian. He found it difficult and said it, he was not perfect, but he pressed on. He gives advice and says to forget what lies behind and strain to go to what is ahead. To learn something new, we need to learn from our mistakes and then leave them behind and keep trying to move ahead. We need to stay positive and focus on our goal. Paul had a heavenly goal. He said, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. As Christians, we also have that goal. We study, listen, and pray so we can learn to live the life of a good Christian and the life that God intends us to live. None of us are perfect. Like the Apostle Paul, we can only keep trying to do our best and help with the help of our faith and be steadfast to our goal of seeking God's plan for us. It will take us a short time to ride a bike or tie a shoe compared to the goal of being a good Christian. That is the goal of a lifetime. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Have a wonderful week, and don't forget to go to Cyber Sunday School today. Thank you, Sue, for your inspiring message to our children. Thank you. Now, it's time to share our joys and to lift up our concerns and prayers. Well, I do not have any specific joy to share, but our joy is fall is here and we enjoy the beauty of this season. And I hear the good news that many of our sick congregants are making some progress and the improvements, so that makes me happy. So now let's hear a few concerns and the prayer requests. After having gallbladder surgery last week, Cheryl Alejandro is continuously doing better and she thanked our congregation for our prayers for her. Doris Kniglius' son, Danny, is doing much better too. He might start his physical therapy next week. Please keep praying for Danny Kniglio. John Predis, son of Sue and Phil Predis, is also improving his physical condition and stop the medications. We pray for regaining of his good health as soon as possible. Dennis Subiendo will undergo his hip replacement surgery on Wednesday, October 7th. He's almost completed his pre-op test and anxiously waiting for the day. Please remember Dennis in your prayers as well. As you have heard, our President Donald Trump and First Lady are coronavirus positive and let us pray for their speedy recovery and the recovery of all those who are suffering with COVID-19. Now, let us pray. O oh Lord, as we celebrate World Communion Sunday today, we pray for all Christians and all the churches in the world. O oh God, Bless us with the coming of our Lord to be the bond which unites us and shatters the barriers that separate us. Make the day soon come, great God, 
when your church is everywhere can be a beacon of hope and unity in a troubled and divided world. Lord, we now pray for our friends and families inside and outside our church. Please remember all those names in our prayer list and in our hearts. May Jesus reach out to heal them and may the Holy Spirit comfort them. O oh God, look graciously upon our world and have mercy on all humanity. We especially pray for our country as we are going through a very challenging time. We ask for your extra protection from the COVID-19 pandemic and all kinds of violence. Lord, you are the mighty God who can stop the hurricanes in southern states and extinguish the wildfires in the west coast. Please take care of our fellow Americans. Keep our children and young people from all the dangers. Therefore, their learning shouldn't be interrupted. Help us, O oh God. With sincere desires and hopes, we pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's lecturer is Bill Otto, and he will read the scripture lessons for today. Bill? Good morning. Please join me in this morning's Hebrew scripture, which is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hid from its heat. The, Lord, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, Rejoicing the heart, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern his errors? Clear thou me from hidden faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Now, please join me in the epistle, which is Philippians 3, 4b through 14. If any other man thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a prophecy, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as refuse, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, 
based on law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, become like him in his death, that if possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies beyond, behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning again, my congregation. About 10 days ago, after dinner, I happened to turn the TV on for the news. However, I stayed to watch the live finale of the America's Got Talent show. All the finalists were above and beyond excellent in singing and performing, but at the end, Brendan Leake, the 27-year-old spoken word poet, won the competition. He received the $1 million prize and will appear in a headlining show in Las Vegas. I heard that Brendan Leake is the first spoken word poet to appear and win in this competition. He said that, he is going to show the world what a spoken word poet can do. I am really curious to know what he can do to change the world with his talents and the $1 million prize. One thing for sure is that his status will be so much different from the past. Now he is a celebrity. The reality shows like America's Got Talent to give hopes and dreams to the people. No wonder why we witness that all the contestants do their best in winning this competition. Winning the America's Got Talent is their life goal. There are so many awards and prizes in different areas of the world. Nobel Prize for the scientists and the politicians, Pulitzer Prize for the journalist, Academy Awards for the movies, the Grammy Awards for the popular singers, the International Classical Music Awards for the classical musicians, the Summer and Winter Olympic medals for the athletes, etc. We just named a very few. However, often we hear the scandals getting around that the judges received bribes and the unfair and unexpected winnings were granted because the judges were influenced by political pressures, personal agenda, professional, or professional bias, and other selfish reasons. In spite of these disgraceful scandals, those who received the awards gained prestige, publicity, and advantage in their field. Well, in any case, I am wondering, is there any award or prize for the ordinary person like me who has no super brain, talents, skills, and power connections to win. As I was reading today's epistle lesson in Philippians chapter 3, through the confessions made by the Apostle Paul, I could have hope and dream to win the Jesus' Heaven Award. I hope that it also provides you the same visions. What am I talking about? Let's find out. 
First of all, in order to understand the context, let's see briefly who Paul is. His Hebrew name was Saul until he was called by Jesus. He was a very orthodox Israelite who was derived from the tribe of Benjamin, a prestigious family heritage. He was elite who studied the law of Israel under Gamaliel, a well-respected Pharisee scholar. By all measures of the secular world, Saul had all the elements to be atop of the societal ladder. His fervent goal in life is to protect the law, Hebrew law. In order to fulfill his life goal, Saul persecuted people who didn't strictly obey the law, particularly a new sect of Jews who followed a rabbi named Jesus. He even participated in an act of stoning a young Christian preacher named Stephen to death. But one day, when Saul was on the road to Damascus to arrest more followers of Jesus, Saul was struck blind by a flash of light from heaven. And then he heard the voice of Jesus asking him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul spent three days in Damascus, blind and helpless. Eventually, he regained his sight through Jesus' follower named Ananias. That was his aha moment, defining moment, transforming moment. That's the time when Saul changed to Paul. At that moment, Paul's previous goals for his life began to look like nothing, even like garbage. That's how he described his previous life goals in today's epistle lesson. Paul said, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count to them as refuse. Later, in this same passage, he declares, I may know him, the, and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death, that if possible, I may have obtained this or am already perfect. Still later, Paul concluded his new goal. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Paul's life goal has been changed. Previously, his fervent goal in life was to protect the Hebrew law, law to be the champion of the law. But now, is changed to serve Jesus Christ, to be the servant of Jesus Christ. Serving Jesus Christ is a Paul's ultimate goal now, and in order to achieve it, he presses on toward the higher goal, which is to win the prize for which God has called him heavenward in Christ Jesus. So then, what does it mean to press on? First of all, in order to win the heavenly prize in the future, we have to live present life on earth fully, sincerely, faithfully, and humbly. We should practice Jesus' commandment in our daily life, Love your God with all your heart, mind, and spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. As the followers of Jesus Christ, that's what we are called to do. 
Jesus died for us in order to save us, and our sins were justified by the loving grace of Jesus Christ. It's a God-given free gift for all of us. However, even though we confessed Jesus Christ as our Savior and received the sign of eternal life, we can't just sit here and do nothing and not put any effort to renew our souls and improve our lifestyle for good. Especially, we Methodists believe sanctification and perfection. Even though we can't perf be perfect like Jesus Christ, like Paul, we still needed to put our best efforts to emulate Jesus' life and have a desire to be like him. Today should be holier than yesterday, and tomorrow should be holier than today. We are moving toward the perfection every day. Our good deeds are not just for achieving our selfish personal goals. Yes, all the prize winners in our world probably accomplished their life goals. But if their accomplishments don't make any difference in the world, there's no fruit. Do something good for the communities and the world so that the kingdom of God on earth should be the better place. Contribute something to make the world a better place. Secondly, pressing on means going all the way. Not mediocrity, but excellency. We think that our accomplishment is good enough, then we tended to look for some place to stop. Of course, from time to time, we needed to take a time to rest, reflect, and reorganize. However, when we reach to somewhere we are comfortable, we like to compromise, make excuses not to move forward, and build the shelter right here and settle. Since we are humans, we do sometimes fall short. That's our nature and our limit. But with Jesus' encouragement and the Holy Spirit's guidance and support, we can put one more step forward. Lastly, pressing on means not giving up. That's a lesson that all of our Christians in our churches needed to relearn again and again. We contemporary Christians are easily discouraged, don't want to try or um, change. And especially these days, as we are going through the COVID-19 pandemic period, we are afraid to face the challenges and say, well, that's the way it is. We will just have to adjust and make the best of it. It sounds great that we are sensitive and smart, smart Christians to accept the reality. However, in the deeper level, so many Christians don't want to share their time, efforts, energy, and resources, but sit there to criticize do nothing but blame others who are trying to improve the situations. They don't walk their talks. Their attitudes are the opposite of what pressing on is. In our present circumstances, pressing on should mean at least trying things and giving helping hands. I believe that all we can do is do our best, and God will judge our work, not by its success, but by its effort. Friends, even though most of us don't think often about the next life, 
It's the greatest prize for Christians. If we gain all worldly prizes but lose our souls and eternal life, what's the purpose of keeping our Christian faith and life? Eternal life is awarded based on Jesus' bias. He's wanting everyone to be saved. Jesus is the fairest judge, and he has no hidden agenda and doesn't take the bribes either. Therefore, with our faith in Jesus Christ, we should press on toward it, but at the same time, we should do what needs to be done in the present time. My fellow Christian brothers and sisters, I'd like to be the winner of Jesus' Heaven Award. Truly, that's my only goal now. Therefore, no matter what, I press on toward this higher goal, and I want you to come along with me. We need each other and embrace one another to win this greatest prize together. I am sure that it's more than a million dollars. Please join in this holy competition. Let's press on. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's be prepared to receive Holy Communion after we sing our next hymn, Lord, I lift your name on high. Faith we sing 2088. <laughs> Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Congregation, today is World Communion Sunday. Our fellow Christians throughout the world will receive communion at the same time according to their time zones today. It is time to remind ourselves that we are one family in Jesus Christ, and we pray for peace and harmony for the world. Let us be ready to receive communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, 
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and the resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with the Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one wolf, we who are many 
a one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. Please take a piece of bread or cracker. The body of Christ given for you. Please take grape juice or wine. The blood of Christ given for you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, Please join with me in our closing hymn, Celebrate Love, in Faith We Sing, number 2073. Celebrate love, love, love. Celebrate love, love, love. Celebrate love, so amazing, he's creating his wonderful love in you. We can celebrate his love today, Jesus loves everyone. We can celebrate new life today, Jesus loves everyone. Celebrate Let us pray. People of God, may the Lord bless us in the service of a world in deep need. May the Lord pursue us for our growth and wholeness. May the Lord give us a way like bread to revive the starving like water to quench the thirsting. 
Remember the body of Christ broken for you, his blood shed for you. Now go in peace and be thankful. Amen. Now let me make a few announcements. As I mentioned last Sunday, we are going to have our charge conference as usual, but virtually. The exact charge conference date is not finalized, but all the committee chairpersons, please be prepared to give your annual report. Also, the nominating committee needs to know who is going to remain in their positions next two year. Please let the nominating committee know your intentions as soon as possible. If you know of anyone needing emergency food or clothing, please call the church office at 631-588-5856. Our emergency food pantry will be open this Tuesday, October 6th, between the hours of 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Our nursery school is looking for the following donations. Lysol disinfecting spray, sanitizing wipes for hands and surfaces, paper towels, liquid hand soap. Please bring your donations to the church office Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thank you. And now, here's a pumpkin posse update. Ray back. Thank you, Pastor. I'm here to make an announcement about our pumpkins. We seem to have a bit of a problem with New Mexico. They had trouble getting the trucks to come. So we don't know when they're going to be delivered. Uh, with that in mind, uh, please try to come out when we do get the delivery. Uh, Kathy will be notifying everyone by email. We are putting out the pallets anyway so that we're all ready to go when they're here. And if you've signed up for, let's say, tomorrow or the next day or the day after that and the pumpkins aren't here, please think about changing the time that you signed up for and taking one of the times that are empty in the next four weeks. Be, please join us and have fun selling the pumpkins. Thank you, Ray. For further information and updates, visit our website at www.umclr.com or contact the Posse directly at Pumpkin patch at umclr.com. That is pumpkin patch at umclr.com. My beloved congregation, harvest season is beginning. Let us focus on our spiritual life in order to bear spiritual fruit. Until we meet again, take good care of yourselves and be well. Shalom to you and so long.